leg and hold. Nice, hold. Nice, okay, shoulder's good. I'm just gonna test this left hip and hold. Feeling each side of the spine, again, rocking it side to side. So these thoracics are moving beautifully. And then kidney area just above the waist. And now just having a feel of the kidney adrenal area and down to the bladder through the ureter. The kidney does feel a little bit tight. Out, raising that opposite hip. That's it, let it go, let it go. This is just repatterning the pelvis using the leg as a lever. Hi Melissa, welcome back to the Bothy, to the therapy room. Thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure and I'm really looking forward to treating you again, lovely lady. Me too. <laughs> so you were here last September, it's been several months. Gosh, it's, man, it's been a while. Yeah, 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 but you're here on a beautiful day. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. So, uh, how have you been since I've seen you? busy so I do still get like a lot of tension and stuff just because of how I'm sat at my desk all day but yeah I've been pretty busy filming busy working so yeah still just as in need of a good relax as usual <laughs> oh bless you hopefully you get some downtime and some holidays and things as well <laughs> no <laughs> Melissa <laughs> this is a holiday <laughs> okay, you've come to me for a holiday, that's nice. A little trip away yeah. into the countryside. Yeah, it's, it's lovely. It's really relaxing being here as well. So. Aww. Oh, it's lovely to have you here. You. So, I just had a quick look back at your original consultation form that you filled in last September. Okay. Um, so I just want a little bit of an update as to how the progress has gone since then and with all the beautiful treatments you've been having, whether you're better and better and, mm -hmm. and finding some good results. Mm -hmm. So back then you talked about a bit of stress. Right. Yeah, are you about the same level of stress as you were or are things um, different? I think I'm better than last September, yeah, yeah. I think, I do think that's one of the things a lot of this channel and the treatments have been helping me with, it's kind of, I mean, so many people are giving me advice on how to deal with stress, I think it is helping. <laughs> there must have been a lot. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Good. And you also used to suffer with headaches? Yeah, they're basically gone. Oh. I don't exactly know, pinpoint know which thing did it, because I tried so many things, but pretty much gone, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> So from my perspective, I think a lot of that might have been a neck and a very tight neck can create headaches. Right. And you must have had lots of treatments that have helped the neck as well. The treatments, I think, help me most are always neck and shoulders. Right. And I can really feel the difference the next day if someone's worked on my neck. I can really tell. Mm. It's, it's basically us humans have a bit of a design fault and our heads are too heavy for our necks and we tend to have our heads forward anyway either looking at phones max looking at the ground where to walk you know we need to put our heads back over our necks over our spine and walk nice and upright still look down but without leaning forward mm -hmm. and we all do it and so that's the sort of thing that will really help you just that orientation of your neck, your head to come back right. so that your vertebrae are stacked upright rather than leaning. Okay. Mm. Okay. There's some mathematical equation as to the further your head is forward, the multiple times weight it puts on your spine. For every millimetre forward, the extra double weight it puts on your spine so <laughs> it, it's really good to have it stacked upright yeah Gosh, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. even when sitting you know everything we're doing really good posture isn't yeah it? good posture yeah so uh, another thing you mentioned was skin how's your skin yeah i think it's i 
don't know if it's better or worse than last September. Probably quite constant. Um, my skin fluctuates a lot in terms of acne and stuff. So, yeah, I think it's more my diet than anything else that seems to show up on my face. So it depends how I feel eating. Okay. <laughs> okay. But at least you're getting to know w what exacerbates it and what improves. Yeah, I know if I do have kind of like sweet foods or oil, oily foods, I do kind of get a spot that I can see as a direct result of it. Really? So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good oils are good though, you know. Yeah, yeah. Nuts, seeds and salad oils. Yeah. And, but yeah, sort of. The, the worst ones are cooked oils that heat and cool and heat and cool. So frying, for instance. Yeah, it would be like chips and a burger that'll give me this spot. <laughs> okay, well, at least you know, and then yeah. it's a life choice, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so anything else? How's your stomach and digestion? Um, pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, no, it's good right now. Oh, I think good. Better than last time. Excellent. Lovely. Okay. I think the stress went straight to the stomach sometimes, so, yeah. That, that <laughs> happens a lot. I see that a lot with my clients, yeah. Right. So, anything else to tell me before we start? Uh, I, I think that's everything, yeah. Okay. So, one last thing I want to do with you before we start is I have a bowl here of some beautiful feel-good, positive cards. It's like a message for the week. And what I do is every client that arrives, I ask them to delve and pick a card. And then um, we read it together and sometimes they'll tell me why it's relevant to them or what they'll think about that week. And then I upturn it and put it on my windowsill. And then all my clients' cards are there and we can all look at each other's and all those feel-good words. And then those resonate all week and I just feel everyone that comes into the Bothy has that positive vibe of those, those meaningful words in, in this room. And also some people take a photograph because then they want to keep reflecting on that word and its message yeah. um, during the rest of the week. Because if you're feeling like you need inspiration or you're feeling like you need a little bit of reassurance, just think back to that word of that card and you it might just hit the spot. Oh, that's a lovely idea. Oh, thank you. It's a random. Let's see which one calls out. Resourceful. I find ways to release hidden potential, giving heart to others that solutions can always be found resourceful nice. lovely i really like that yeah does that resonate yeah i think it does mm. i think it's a really positive word mm. that yeah yeah i think i really like that <laughs> good yeah. yeah and it might just uh, give you a little bit of strength this week you yeah. know there might be a moment that you think no remember that card i'm resourceful yeah, yeah, that's really nice. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so let's give you a nice call treatment. Thank you. Okay, would you like to lie down? Thank you. Okay, comfy. It's a heated couch, so it should be nice and warm on your back. It's lovely. Yeah, good. Okay, so we're going to start off with some kinesiology like we did last time. Okay. Can you raise an arm for me? Just turn it, that's it. So I'm going to push at your wrist and you're going to keep it exactly where it is now. Don't let me push it down. Okay. And hold. Lovely. Same the other side. And hold. Good. And raise a leg, Melissa. I'm going to push here and hold. Good. A little bit of a shake there. And hold. Same again. Let's see if it disappears and hold. Okay, it's coming down a little bit and hold. Okay, I'm just going to see if you're dehydrated by pulling your hair. And hold. That's slightly better. Would you mind just having half a glass of water Ooh, for me? Yeah. Got some ready for you here. Thank you. 
So the reason I pull the hair is because the hair relates directly to the kidneys and if the kidneys are dehydrated they'll take their water from the hair. That's why some people particularly have dry hair, brittle hair or hair that doesn't behave. I had no idea. Mm. So, um, yeah. So it, your test was slightly better when I tested the dehydration. So we'll see if it's much better now after some water. Thank you. <laughs> That's ready if you want any more. Ah, thank you. Okay, so let's test that again. Arm and leg together and hold. So much better. That's so weird. Can you feel the difference? I can really feel it. And hold. Okay, so it's going down on your right side. So I'm just going to have a feel of your right... Uh, just relax, relax, that's it. Of your right SIS, which is the sacroiliac separation. Okay. So, um, it's very common, although it shouldn't be there, and so we'll just see if I can get that corrected. So I've just anchored it, and then we'll retest this side and hold. No, let me just see if, because I talked in between, that sometimes can delay the effect of the anchor. So I'm just going to feel it again, or I might have got slightly the wrong place, and hold. No, it's still not strong. Let me just have a little feel from this angle. Yeah, I, I think I might have gone slightly the wrong place. And hold. Yeah, I felt it that time. Yeah. It felt nice. Yeah, so when I touched it that third time, it felt a bit sore there, did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. like more tender. Okay, so let's move on to across you. Left arm, right leg, and hold. Nice. And hold. Okay. And hold. Yeah. Okay. So it's quite obvious when you pass and when you fail. Yeah. <laughs> and hold. Nice. Okay. Shoulders good. And hold. Lovely. I like the colour of your top. It's lovely. Oh, thank you. And hold. Nice. Good. Just going to test this left hip. Hold. Yeah, it's just shaking a little bit there. It's sort of like a judder. And hold. Definitely the knee. Did you feel oh, that? No yeah, strength there. went straight down. Yeah. It's so weird. And hold. Yeah, ankle's fine. So definitely knee, tiny bit of hip, but this side fine and all the others are fine because they didn't fail in the first place. So I'm just going to update my notes. So that was your right, uh, left, knee, and hip. Okay, so I'm just going to have a look at the knee in a little bit more detail. Just giving it a little turn and raise and hold, yep. Twisting it the other way and hold. No, gosh. So I'm just anchoring you. Let's just see if it's on the inside or the outside and hold. Okay. And hold. Okay. At the back and hold. No, that's good. Okay, so it's definitely that twist. So coming in underneath out up top so lateral so it's a clockwise twist the knee so that was your left knee clockwise okay let's have a look at these hips so just going to have a look at your posture your orientation so the clavicle is down slightly on your left hand side and so is the hip a little bit more of the hip wise actually. Knees are level interestingly and ankles down so I'll just see if that's correct. Give me an arm again and hold nice and hold. 
hold and hold good and hold yeah and hold slightly there so this is the um, those are called ACES test, tests on the pelvic area to see if they're twisted up or down, back or one side, or whether they're coming apart slightly. So that's when I test by pushing them in. And um, it definitely was weaker on that one. So uh, I'll make a note about that. So it's not too much. Okay. It's only a little bit of a twisted left knee and the pelvis just opening up a little bit too much. It needs, it's almost like you need sellotaping, you know, you need binding back together again, which is what the core treatments will do. Okay. Okay, so uh, ASIS. And the knee, yeah. Okay, um, let's have a look at your neck by testing your leg. So I'm going to come out and up slightly. I'm going to try pushing to the floor. You're going to hold up and hold. Okay, that's a bit of an effort. And out again and up. I'm going to push to the floor and hold. Okay. It wasn't rock solid. I think that was a little bit of an effort for you. So I'm yeah. just going to have a little feel of your upper neck, just around C1. Just relax, relax. Sorry about my cold hands. Thank you. <laughs> Quite refreshing. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that bit's so tense. Yeah, yeah. Particularly on the left. I think they're both pretty bad, but actually, yeah, now that you say it, the left is okay. Okay, so um, so we just did a leg test called a psoas test. So you have psoas muscles within your pelvis that are, it should be nice and strong and the right orientation, but sometimes they are compromised and it means that it's a struggle to do that test and you weren't bad at it but you need to be absolutely rock solid and okay. it, it can be better so when it's bilaterally weak i know that it's going to be the neck at c1 wow. the, the the top vertebra and so when i touch it if it's sore then it definitely confirms that that was a weak test and the the neck needs treating which you told me before anyway so right. but I know exactly where um, okay. and C1 is a, a sliver of a bone it's a quite quite a long thin bone it's not a chunky one like most mm -hmm. of the others and it's designed in a way that it fits perfectly into the base of the occiput bone which is the base of the cranium if we had whiplash or an accident where the head flips in that way and in order to save our lives so we're not decapitated that bone will fit directly into the occiput and like fixate there so that it stops us injuring ourselves the only thing with that is it's really difficult to pull that bone down off there again so that you've got that free movement and mobility for the rest of your life it's really difficult to get that off so right. if we've had some injury or accident normally quite a major one like falling off a horse or or car accident or trampolining injury or you know whatever else yeah. then we can have that fixated bone there for life um, right. and it can give us headaches it can give us blurred vision it can stop the correct blood flow into the brain and the head and um, for good cognition and clear thinking, etc. So um, it's really important to check that the bone orientation is correct in the okay, neck and head. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's maybe one reason why it was so sore there. Maybe you've injured it in some way. And so core therapy is a fantastic way to mm. to 
just gently move that bone so it eventually rocks off and comes away from the occiput. Right. Wow. Mm. I didn't even know that existed. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you don't need to know yeah. really. It's it's um, the therapist would need to know it, but uh, yeah. it's Thank worth you for explaining knowing. though. It's it's really interesting actually knowing as well. Well, so many of us have that. Um, injury that that effect on the c1 and occiput but we have no idea and maybe yeah. we suffer from migraines or headaches or just a, a thick head um, and obviously lack of mobility um, you know driving or or just making us feel like we have a sore neck all the time and it's yeah. most likely something like that that will have caused it maybe way back like you know way back in our youth even yeah, yeah. Gosh. Mm. <laughs> Worth knowing about. Yeah. Okay, so can I have a little look at the tummy? Yeah, Is yeah that of okay? course. Can you just pull your top up for me? So if I could, my hands are still a bit chilly okay, on the throat. Okay. The you bed did, is lovely and warm though. So as it well. is, and you did say they were refreshing. <laughs> so I'll, I'll take you up on that. So I'm just going to have a little feel here. So this is halfway between the hip bone and the tummy button, I remember this about you. I'm really bad with the tummy. Yeah, you're not keen on this, are you? No. You know, I must have treated thousands of people. And at the moment, I think I've got about five people who are similar to you. You're grinning and bare. <laughs> you're gritting your teeth. Uh, similar to you, where they just don't like their tummy touched. It, it's like a very strange feeling, isn't it? It's so weird. Yeah. You see, you wouldn't have that if you touched your tummy, would you? Probably not. Okay. So give me two fingers and put them where mine are. But if you can, as deep as mine are. So is that still a strange feeling? Yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah. It is. Ooh. So can you go a bit... So stay there for me, about there, and go a bit deeper. Look at you. <laughs> okay. So stay there. Stay there. Okay, give me your arm, nice straight arm. I'm going to push, you're going to hold and hold. Okay, so can you feel that? You can let go now. Can you feel that hold wasn't as concrete as I would like it? Yeah. So in a normal circumstance, I would give you an amnofu deep abdominal Chinese massage. Okay. Okay, but because I know how you would feel with that, I'm not going to do that today. So a bit later in the treatment, I'm just going to give it some qigong, which is some deep warming energy treatment, some qi. Okay. Um, and I will be focusing on the area we were just touching, which is called the ICV, the iliosacral valve. I remember this from last time, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really important that our ICVs are clear and open, allowing food through in the, in the right timing in the, in and uh, the right amounts so if it's twisted or tight as it might be then it won't be doing its job properly so i'm just going to give it a little bit of chigong in, okay. instead of uh, an amnofu okay you can put your top back down so when you're ready you can turn over Thank you. right can you bend your knee and raise your knee off the couch. I'm going to push here and hold. Okay, so that wasn't great. <laughs> Bless you. And same with the other side. Bend first. So bend, 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 and now raise and hold. Okay, same again. There wasn't much strength behind those. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I'd agree. I'm just pulling your socks up, otherwise everyone's going to go, why aren't the heels at the heels? <laughs> So I'm just going to feel that C2 this time. So as I said just now, C1 is a sliver of a bone and C2 is a mighty thick bone. And you can feel I'm touching it now. That's probably a bit sore, is it? Mm. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's not, it's not very bad. Okay. It's tender. Okay. So can you bend your knee again and raise? I'm going to push and hold. Okay, so that's a bit better. Same the other side and hold. And again, a bit better. 
So I will be working on your C2 as well when I come to do your neck. So I'm going to work on your spine now using lots of TCM techniques. This is Tweenar, which is a lovely rocking technique. And at the moment I'm working fairly gently because I'm just working out where your back is warm or cool, whether your back feels tight or restricted or twisted, whether the spine is pulling left or right, and whether it's more pronounced or more sunken. There's lots of different sensations I'm looking for at first when I touch a back giving tween R. So at the moment I can feel this area is quite tight. So this is T1 here, this knobbly bone, thoracic one. And that's quite tight there. And I can tell because when I push, your head comes with me rather than twisting like this, it's moving as one. But we've got some nice rocking, soft, flowing action down here with the lower spine, mid spine. So that's good because I will use the fact that this part of the spine is so good to be able to free up the upper spine. Because what we do in core is we don't go straight into where is tight or sore, wherever the key problem is. We tend to avoid it a little at first actually, and then use the rest of the body as its friend to help warm up and have an influence on the tighter areas. So I'm getting my phenar muscle, the base of my hand, the heel of my hand, in around the sacrum bone. So I'm tracing the edge of the sacrum and just around this edge are a myriad of ligaments that attach like sellotape around the outside and the inside of the sacrum, from there to the iliac, each side, the, the hip bones. And they help secure and hold the pelvis in the correct orientation. So I'm also using my thumbs in a line Pressing directly on the side of the spine. And then also over that lovely flat bone of the scapula, bringing my thumbs up in a soft pinching action. It doesn't hurt at all, it's quite nice actually, but it's just working out where is soft, where is tight, where needs extra attention. And the sacrum can take quite a lot of strength and weight. So I'm pressing in a downward direction over that sacrum. Pushing it down towards the legs. And then just coming round And it feels amazing. Oh, good. It's a really nice feeling. I think it takes us back to the cradle because we're being rocked. It feels like we're being, really being nurtured and looked after and loved. Oh. Yeah, that's a really interesting way of mm. seeing it. I mean, when are we ever rocked as adults? Yeah, that's a, a good point. Occasionally with a really long hug, um, maybe at a fairground or something. Yeah, <laughs> on a ride, uh, I guess, yeah. There are some yoga moves that are a nice rocking action. 
Um, but no, generally, I don't think we rock, do we? Yeah, and it does kind of make you feel really looked after. It's a, I guess the whole treatment does, but it's a really a rare feeling. That's what I love about core. It's the whole body. You know, yeah. I will get round to treating everywhere. It's not just the area that you've come in for. You know, if people came in for a sore toe, I wouldn't just treat the toe. Mm. You know, I see all different kinds of issues and needs and ailments, all sorts. I had a lady arrive yesterday, bless her, she was quite um, upset and she's been dealing with many airs. So it's, it's actually called many airs disease um, for years and um, it comes in fits and starts. Sometimes she has an attack that lasts for 12 weeks. Oh my gosh. Um, and it just makes you very sick because it affects the inner ear, a bit like labyrinthitis, where it makes you very dizzy and you don't really know which way is up. And so you, you can't walk or even travel in a car or oh you gosh. just have to stay put, probably in a dark room, probably with closed eyes, because as soon as you open your eyes, you don't know where the horizon is and which way is up and you, your, your body just feels upside down all the time. Oh no. Yeah, I really feel for her. So I haven't started treating her yet. She just came for a chat. So I'm hoping I'm going to be able to help her. I'm going to give her core therapy and some cranial treatment and Qigong and obviously a neck release because I think it's probably to do with the neck again. Oh. And we'll see. I, I don't think it's going to be a quick healing mm. action we yeah. might it might take weeks we'll have to see that sounds tough i can't imagine what that's like no and she's a very active lady and it can affect you at any age apparently she was talking to someone who is a young mum with two young children and she's had to deal with it oh, yeah rough. it's amazing how some of them can all relate back to the neck though there's a like tiny Tiny bones. You're right. It yeah. is amazing. It's just something I would never have thought it would be for for anything posture wise. I never think about the neck. No. I always think about my core or my shoulders. I guess. I don't think we any of us do. I didn't really before I got into core therapy. I mean, I've been doing therapies for years, but I didn't realise how vital the neck is to all of our health until I studied TCM and core therapy. Mm. Am I pulling your hair? I'm sorry. No, not at all. So this is called a wing stretch. Your angel wings, just pulling out each scapula. That's it, nice and relaxed. Let it loosen, beautiful. coming down each side of your spine, again rocking the spine side to side. So the spine should give, it should shift left to right. It's quite a strong back Melissa has, but I'm feeling, oh yeah, it's moving here a bit better. But the lumbars won't, won't move in brilliantly. I'll come back down here. So these thoracics are moving beautifully. 
and then kidney area just above the waist just starts to go tighter here can you feel that Melissa yeah and then a little bit further down to the waist and the top of the sacrum yeah so from doing that I can feel that the waist area the, the kidney area needs a little bit more attention so what I'm trying to do here is rock the pelvis in order to create some flow in the vertebra Oh, it's especially this side, yeah, it's more left. I can feel that now. Sometimes the more you work on a part of the body, the more the actual source of the issue of the area comes out. And that's what's happened here. So the more you work on it, it becomes more obvious. There we are. Oh, lovely. Much warmer, much looser. Good, okay. Um, and then a brief scapular float. Okay, so just coming down to the feet. Actually, I'm going to put a nice wheat bag on your neck. That will help when I come to do the neck release. There we go. I know you like your heat, oh, don't you? Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. And actually, I'm going to put this on your back, ready for coming there. So relaxing your foot down. There you go, relax, that's it, relax your foot down. So picking up the big toe, holding it with one thumb while securing the base of the big toe with the other, massaging around, which is actually the neck area in reflexology terms. There's some good mobility there. So I'm not only mobilising at the base of the thumb, but also halfway up at that knuckle point, halfway up the thumb. Beautiful. And now I'm just having a feel of the kidney adrenal area and down to the bladder through the ureter. I'm just having a feel. The kidney does feel a little bit tight and uh, I'd have worked on it with the back but this needs a little bit extra TLC just needs some warmth probably needs a pint of water <laughs> <laughs> do you drink much water Melissa um I do but they're always in like a very specific part of the day like when I'm sat at my desk I drink quite a lot but then in the mornings and the evenings, I think I don't really drink it that much. Okay. Well, so long as you're getting enough yeah. through when you're working, it should be okay. Yeah, I think I drink quite a bit. Yeah, okay. Okay, 
so a foot float, a little bit of orientation, anchoring into some key acupressure points, pushing into the pelvis, turning out, raising that opposite hip, that's it, let it go, let it go, this is just repatterning the pelvis, using the leg as a lever, lovely, and down. So feeling into the base of that toe again, loosening. What I try and do with the foot is separate the foot into, in my mind, into three sections. And then I'm holding the bottom two sections while I'm separating and moving in a clockwise or anti-clockwise manner, rotating the upper part of the foot. And that hopefully loosens this uh, scapula point, which is the reflex point of the, the foot. And all of those joints, muscles of the upper part of the body. There you go. That'll feel good. And now coming down, feeling that kidney again, this time on the left-hand side. Mm, it's just popping a little bit. I can feel it just... It's like going down a step. It feels quite firm at the kidney and then go down a step to the ureter. Of course, I've felt hundreds of kidney points on the feet. So I'm getting to know what feels um, like healthier or less healthy and, and how to treat them. So sometimes by just in a circular motion, pulling the kidney away towards the posterior part of the foot, the internal side, bringing it forwards in order, like I do with Twinar, if you like, to bend the organ, bend the muscle in the foot in order to stretch it out, encourage it to loosen, it encourage the kidney to expel, get rid of anything it's holding on to. Of course, the kidneys in Chinese terms are associated with the feeling of fear. So if we have tight kidneys, it can be a sense of fear that we all relate to. We all have fear of some aspect within our lives. So this is really good. If you find this place in your foot, give it a good massage in order to release fear. It's like having a hug, some reassurance. And then coming up to the solar plexus point, holding on to the acupressure places and then bringing the lower leg right out in order to raise that opposite hip, realign the pelvis. That's it, let go, let go, I've got you. Nice and smooth. Lovely. Lovely, good, good, and down. So I've just got two hands on the very base of the spine over the large flat bone of the sacrum. Applying a little bit of Qigong. Just kick started straight away. Now oh, that 
feels so good. I'm feeling the energy. Arriving and settling. Tuning into the cerebral spinal fluid as it pulses on its way around the head, down the spine, arrives at this point in the sacrum and goes back up again. And the pulse is very different to our circulatory pulse. It's very different to our breath timing. It's, it's normally a little slower. And it can get out of out of rhythm. So one of the intentions with a sacral float is to tune into that pulse and instill a little reassurance and, and rhythm. And at a certain point, I just feel a huge release, like the spine and the cerebral spinal fluid are in tune, relaxed, and working together.
your own time if you'd like to turn back over, Melissa. You are right. I'm very sleepy. Yeah, good, good. Okay, so... Um, I think you need to reorganise your hips. I feel like you haven't laid down correctly. That's it, okay, yeah, yeah, it's probably something I need to do, that's all right. Yeah, so this hip is prouder, so I'm just going to pick you up and move you around a bit. You see, I see that's more aligned. And so is that. Does that feel a bit odd now? It feels so weird. Okay, do what you need to do then to feel okay. Okay, let's have a look at you. Yeah, you've put yourself back. Yeah, so this hip is coming forward here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I have to... Well, you don't have to. You, <laughs> you need to be comfortable, but I can just see what your hips are doing through the way you're lying. Yeah. So this part of you is this way and this is here. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to work a little bit on the hip. Is this all right, me doing this? Yeah. Not too sensitive? Yeah, the hip is fine. Yeah. Compared to the tummy. Yeah. I mean, it can get a bit sensitive around here. You are right, me working here with okay. the heel of my hand. So this is more into the groin area where we have a lymph factory called the inguinal lymph, dealing with waste materials and scooping up lymph from lymph nodes all around the lower part of the body. Yeah, it does feel a bit tight there. Does it feel tight to you? I'm wondering if that is that's why you're yeah, I can rolling. Yeah, like a, a point there that yeah, I can feel. Yeah, Ooh, it's quite yeah, tight. Yeah, yeah. So it's probably not quite so bad on this side. No, no. it's not comfortable, but it's nothing compared to the other yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Would you like a hot towel on you? Yes, please. Oh, they're nice, aren't they? Just going to give your knee some qigong. Just going to raise it slightly, put mine under, and back down. That's it, nice and relaxed. So I'm just tuning into the feel of the knee. Again, whether there's any softness, whether it feels too tight, whether it feels misaligned, cold, it feels nice and warm, but it does feel quite tight, especially on the outside, lower down, so I'm just feeling with my thumbs to soften that outside lower part of the knee, and then into the patella, yeah, it's moving, that's good. Having done a little bit of Twino, I'm just going to give it some Qigong. So, holding my hands each side, tuning into the energy, and instilling some, some ease, softness, fluidity, 
when we tested the knee earlier at the start of the treatment with the kinesiology, the knee unfortunately didn't give a very good positive test. It was probably one of the weaker ones, so I'm just really intending some good energy here. Knees can be associated with not wanting to move forward in life. being held back by something. So, moving into that knee to get it soft and fluid. The warmth and the energy is quite amazing. Beautiful. Lovely. So just feeling into the hips. Feel like it needs to let go, soften, loosen. Feel like there's a lot of tightness there, a lot of stress maybe. So I'm just feeling into those hips and immediately I'm feeling a lovely rotation like a, a chakra rotating very slow but it's beautiful flowing action. So because of one of the tests on the ACES pelvic kinesiology tests earlier was the coming together of the iliac just felt a bit loose in the test so I'm just tuning into those iliac and bringing them back together making the pelvis one whole beautiful girdle. Lovely. I'm just going to take the arm. Now sit nice and soft. Working with the arm as a lever to work on that shoulder, scapula, and neck.
so that one really helped my job. Okay, so now I'm going to give your ICV some Qigong. So coming round, just going to slip my hand under your tummy. That's it, just relax back down, lovely. So I've got my hand just over the the iliosacral valve in the abdominal area. And I'm picturing the valve visualizing where it rests, how it looks, sending it some positivity. And with Qigong there's always warmth that starts quite soon. And then I'm picturing like an unwinding as if the ICV perhaps is twisted or tight or blocked or it might be in the right place untwisted and loose but it might simply need some love and attention so I'm just giving it some Qigong to do that right now straight away there's this beautiful circling energy and tends to go in a clockwise manner It's, uh, it's loosening, it's great. So this is definitely the right approach where the abdomen is very tight or sensitive. Loosening and softening, really powering through this beautiful Qigong energy. Some nice breath work, some nice longer breaths. Mm, that feels a lot better. Okay. Now I come to work on the neck. I'm just going to take your hair away. There we are, lovely. Sorry, my hands are still chilly. Even after all that work. got nice flat palm up hands feeling each side of the spine again rocking it side to side seeing if it moves with me and wherever there's tightness I'll come back to I'm just getting an idea at the moment of what's happening so immediately I can feel that we're holding on to a bit of tension here. We just need to let that go. So breathe, breathe, breathe. That's it. Let go, let go. Lovely. Well done. Well done. And then T1. And then up to C7. Yeah, rocking okay. But it will be better after all. Oh, and then a bit of clunking. Oh, yeah, sorry, you can feel okay. that, yeah, so that's, oh, that's your C3 right side, 
left is okay. And then just coming up to do a neck release. So bringing the hands and just let go, Melissa, let go. That's it. Nice heavy head. Heavy head all the way down. That's it. I know it feels very uncomfortable, but this will get better every time we repeat this action. And then pulling at the occiput to try and levitate the C1 off the, the occiput. Rocking again. And starting way down the thoracics. Halfway between the scapula. Just instilling a little bit of softness here. up for a neck release once more. That's it. Perfect. Wonderful. So that's the action that we want. A nice tilt back where the gap between C1 and the occiput is encouraged to open. And it can feel tight at first and the more we do that particular C1 neck release the more it opens up. And pushing down each shoulder. Just a little bounce. So that should bounce back every time I give it a little push. If it doesn't, which I do see from time to time, it just means that the neck and shoulders are so tight, there's no looseness, no softness there, no bounce. And yeah, so I'm shifting that T1 left and right to loosen up that upper back and neck and shoulders. The neck is still very tight. Sometimes when I'm doing this, I feel like it's my neck. I can feel it on myself. Lovely. I'm putting some intention some Qigong with the end of my row of fingertips and warmth. And then a gentle stretch. Good. I've come back up to the neck. It's shifting now. Lovely. Oh, still a little bit clunky at that point, but I think we're going to get rid of that. It, letting it go, beautiful, lovely rock back. Oh, there's some beautiful space there now. So now I've got my fingers in a row at about between C2 and C3, creating another little gap, and then a stretch again. I'm 
going to come all the way down the spine. Oh, a bit sensitive there. Letting it go. That was probably a bit sore. Okay, let it go, let it go. I've got you. Give me the full weight of your head. Lovely. So I'm quite low down now, in between C6 and C7. Now I'm going to turn and have a look at the left side. So I'm pushing down on each vertebra and hopefully, as it is doing, the neck is bouncing back, cre creating this lovely rocking action of the head. Each time I press on a separate vertebrae. It's a bit tight higher up. And looser lower down. So normally with clients I'd say the neck does take months to sort out. Probably need to come weekly at first and then <clears throat> space them out and then eventually to six weekly for maintenance. Obviously this is a one-off treatment which is fine. It will still make a big difference. You'll still feel some improvement in your neck, etc. So I'm now just pushing on the spinal process of C2, which is near to the top. And I can feel C3 is really tight. I'm just going to, there we are. Yeah. It's giving a bit of grief that I know, but it will be worth it just to have some more mobility, less tightness, probably less pain and referred pain, for instance, headaches and brain fog. And to the other side, pushing down the right side of the spine, each vertebra separately. around. Oh yeah, I know I've had this done to myself many times. I know how it feels. It can feel a little bit sore. That's it. You're doing really well. <laughs> That's really good. Having some good deep breaths. moving well now. Much better. Good. Sorry if I keep catching your hair. No, no, it doesn't hurt at all. Oh, good. But the neck does, hey? Neck, neck does. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like tender, isn't it? Yeah. But it also feels amazing because I can feel it being released, like the tension. It's just so nice. Oh, that's good. Yes, it's a strange feeling, isn't it? Because it feels sore, but on the other hand, you sort of feel no carry-on. I think that's doing yeah, something really good. It's like good soreness. Lovely. It's gone a little bit rosy, which is a good sign. Shows the blood's come to the area, which is what I want. And then back to the centre. Just having another little feel of the neck. Oh! Okay, so I'm just going to hold on that little point for a moment. Are you okay there? Ooh, yeah. So I've got two fingers on the side of C3 on the right side. I'm pushing them left because they felt they were subluxating to the right. Feeling into the energy, the warmth, Qigong, 
visualizing and intending that energy directly to that vertebrae. better that clunk has gone and a strong stretch pushing the shoulder down and the neck up and across lengthening and turning a little it's something we can't really do to ourselves these kind of stretches so it's really nice to have them done Cranial balancing. I'm at the point of the temporals and occiput. Got my thumb to the front of the temples. My hands and fingers round the sides and back. We're tuning into that beautiful qigong. Concentrating on here is the length of the spine. So where I'm touching at the back of the neck is the very top of the spine where it touches the occiput. And now I'm visualizing all the sets of the spine as it goes all the way down to the sacrum through the cervical, the thoracic, lumbar, sacrum and coccyx. I'm tuning into each vertebra in turn making sure it's happy, it's aligned, not twisted or fixated or subluxated, simply it is in a good place and it is a privilege as a therapist to facilitate and to be present during this state, which is so rare in people's lives, I feel honoured and humbled to be present. Just going to give another Qigong technique, just at the sphenoid bone, using the heel of my hands, just touching in a reassuring way, not pressing and not too lightly, just a nice touch, being constant. And this bone has a lot to do with our hormones because it secures the floor of the pituitary gland which sits just above in between the eyes at the back just like a plane flying it can tilt downwards or upwards it can tilt up left or right down left or right there's so many different angles and directions If it tilts too far down, we're prone to feeling depressed, to feeling low. It's really 
very important that our sphenoid and therefore our eye line looks out to the horizon. Mm, that feels good. Okay, keeping your eyes closed, Melissa, take three nice long breaths. And slowly sending your breath down to your feet and your hands. And then gradually introducing a little movement. Stretching into the fingers and the toes. Widening the palms and the soles. And then turning into the wrists and the ankles. And then turning into the shoulders, rotating one way and the other. And then when you're ready to, bringing your arms up over your head for a nice long body stretch. Okay, my pleasure. So I just need to retest a couple of things that weren't happy earlier. Okay. So I only retest the ones that failed earlier. Right. Um, so can I have your right arm and your right leg and hold? So different. Very different. Wonderful. So I'm going to look at your knee, which was that one. Can I have this arm and hold? Nice, really good. I mean, that was that was quite a bad one oh, earlier. It went straight so down earlier, didn't it? It did, yeah. So the leg is going to come out and then up. I'm going to push down to the floor. You're going to hold up and hold. Oh, easy. <laughs> so you held it earlier, but I could feel it, it was a strain for you. Yeah. So we're coming out again. And up. I'm going to push down and hold. Okay, so that's going down a little bit. So I'm just going to have a little feel what's causing that. It's probably in the back rather than the neck this time. So you just loosen. That's it. So it's probably about there. Is that sore? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to hold it for a little bit because I'm not just testing it now. I'm going to treat it for a moment. And if this is out, then C6 is going to be out. So I'm just going to have a little feel under your collar. About there. Yeah. Okay, let's have a little retest of this. Coming out and up. I'm going to push to the floor. You're going to hold up and hold. Much better. Good, good. And then the last one, hips. And give me an arm and hold. Perfect, easy, you're fine. It's amazing how the body responds, it's so cool. Yeah, that's what I love about it. The, the, the proof is at the end when we get the strong tests of ones that were previously weak. Yeah. So you've been core therapied. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. It was wonderful. Absolute pleasure.